Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gember Red, and today we're going to talk about how to use an incandescent bulb to get the coveted 1060 nanometer wavelength. Now we're going to measure the spectrum and intensity of the lamp to confirm it does indeed emit those wavelengths. Then we're going to put on a water filter, and then we're going to use our crystal ball. Okay, so we've got our heat lamp. It's the GE brand heat lamp. It's one of the best heat lamps that money can buy. You can also get Philips or FET Electric or Satco but they all emit essentially the same spectrum, and that's kind of what we're trying to figure out here. So we're gonna check the spectrum and intensity at 20 inches away. So even at 20 inches away, usually it's recommended to be at least 18 inches away from these heat lamps because of the longer wavelengths that cause a lot of heat. But even at 20 inches away, we get 9.1 milliwatts per centimeter squared. You see the units are a little different, so I did the conversion. So it's 9.1 milliwatts per centimeter squared. And you can see from this meter, the range starts at a little bit of yellow and red and builds all the way up to a peak of 1019. So according to this measurement, the peak wavelength is that 1020 nanometers which is kind of right in that zone of starting in the near infrared 2 zone and it's a very broad spectrum so you can see it continues on down all the way through okay so we've added a water filter which is just a glass face filled with water now this water is going to absorb more of the heating wavelengths that is normally absorbed superficially by the skin and that's why we feel heat from heat lamps and so what passes through is going to be the deeper penetrating wavelengths. So now when we remeasure at the same distance, we only get 3 milliwatts per centimeter squared, and we see we've changed the spectrum. And there's a big dip in the mid-900s, around 970, because there's a peak of water absorption in the mid-900s. So the water filter is absorbing more of that middle 900s. But we see a lot of the thousands getting passed through because the thousands have kind of a low point of water absorption. And that's why you get good penetration from the mid thousands, 1050, 1060, 1070s. And you can imagine that's kind of happening for the rest of the spectrum that we can't measure. Since it's a lot cooler now and it filtered a lot of the wavelengths, we'll take another measurement at about six inches away from the bulb. So now at six inches away, we get about 20 milliwatts per centimeter squared, which is a nice intensity. And we're going to get a better spectrum of deeper penetrating near infrareds that aren't going to cause as much superficial heating. And of course, the promise of these 1060 nanometer wavelengths is that they'll penetrate deeper. But if you really want to optimize that penetration, you want to use skin contact. So then we can take our glass ball and funnel that intensity back down and get that skin compression by using the glass ball. And here we go, we get 105 milliwatts per centimeter squared through the glass ball, which you can press into the skin and get that deeper penetration and really optimize if you want those deep penetrating wavelengths of 810, 830, 1060, then you really need that skin compression to really optimize it. Otherwise, you know, if you just have a panel that you're some inches away with a low percentage of 1060, are you really getting that deep pe penetration that's being promised? And interesting, the peak does tell us it's 1065, so it's right in that sweet spot that a lot of people want. And so that's a hack for getting deep penetrating 1060 wavelength. All you need is an incandescent bulb, the lamp, a glass vase filled with water, and a crystal ball. That's it. Thanks for tuning in.